so if you want to take a look at the evolution of business intelligence or business analytics from five years ago primarily reporting to query to now guided navigation uh, it also allowed us to move out of the domain of IT experts or PhDs that had to do the analytics to the analytic application being available for almost everyone in the organization and our intent is in fact to make it available to fully everyone in the organization by adopting techniques that we know users like and have learned to live with. So for instance, most users are spreadsheet users today in one capacity or another. Uh, what we've done is we've built analytics that sit on top of a spreadsheet and in effect allow the user to toggle back and forth between tabular format of information and graphical format of information. Uh, by doing that, we're opening the aperture for business intelligence to literally everyone in the organization. Uh, the other dimension that we are moving down the path on is to try to add more data to the user. So it's not only structured information that sits in a well-organized database or a spreadsheet, but also information that may be in the web or information that may be in an email document or other text that exists around the corporation. And so as we expand along the dimension of getting the information out to more users and getting access to more information, we think that we are, in a sense, embracing the entire organization and embracing the new way that people want to do work with information. Uh, if you look at business objects as it was before SAP, uh, business objects had about 45,000 customers. Mm -hmm. SAP, roughly the same number of customers. Only about 5,000 of these customers overlapped with each other. And so uh, we now have an interesting challenge and an opportunity. First of all, cross-selling into the SAP customer base is clearly a phenomenal opportunity for business objects and we are pursuing that with vigor, as you might imagine. Mm -hmm. Secondly, maintaining the existing base of 40,000 customers who weren't SAP customers, who were say Oracle or Microsoft customers, is also very important to us and we are uh, focusing very hard on making sure that customers know that we remain open, we remain heterogeneous, we remain multi-platform, we remain able to deal with information whether it sits on any database uh, or any file structure in a marketplace. And then there is the opportunity to bring the SAP customer, or I should say bring the SAP content to the non-SAP customer as a bonus, if you will, in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And we are doing work on all three fronts, and we're working uh, in our technology, in our labs, to make the migration or, or uh, continuing existence of customers in their preferred environment as easy as possible. Uh, we're also working hard on trying to figure out how the SAP support capability and the experience that customers have had with SAP can be transformed into the same kind of experience for the business objects customers. Very important investment, and very important part of our focus. So let's define structured and unstructured information for the purpose of this discussion. Uh, structured data is data which is organized in databases or files of some structure. It typically is numerical data, or at least it's coded in a way that is relatively easy to consume by a machine. Uh, unstructured data is data which is typically text or media in content. Uh, it happens to be in files that are not particularly well structured, HTML or uh, email uh, or documents. Uh, and it, it is data which uh, is not necessarily managed by a um, well-documented application, especially email. Uh, so as we try to bring these two worlds together, uh, what we need to do is first of all take the unstructured data and organize it in ways that makes it easy for an application to use. So it has to be tagged, it has to be coded in some way, it has to be analyzed and it has to be um, annotated in ways that makes it easy for analysis to take place. And then what we have to do is figure out what does the user actually see and do 
uh, with that annotated information or with that index or with that uh, metadata structure that they now have available so they can in fact consume that unstructured information in, in a productive and useful way. Uh, the technology to do all of the things I just described exists. Uh, what we now need to figure out is what are the use cases, what are the real repeatable ways that we can bring this technology and make it effective for the customers to adopt. So we are relatively comfortable with call center applications where we give unstructured information about a customer to the call center operator. We're relatively comfortable with applications where legal discovery needs to take place or medical discovery needs to take place and we're consuming vast number of documents to arrive at pointing at few that are the key documents to uh, give us the specific value proposition. But we'd like to make it more generic. We'd like to make unstructured data part of everyday analysis and those use cases are still in front of us. I would say my answer to the adoptability of uh, web analytics or um, traffic analytics uh, is really dependent on the industry in which the customer uh, resides. So when you're talking to uh, customers that are in the uh, consumer packaged goods, for instance, they are vitally interested in understanding what's happening in the retail uh, channel. They don't own retail channels typically, they rely on distribution channels to get the product to the hands of the consumer. But getting that feedback and getting that feedback rapidly and consistently and from as broad a representation of retail points is very, very important. Uh, customers already do that today with, let's say, Nielsen data or IRI data. But these analyses are not real time uh, and they are only available in uh, if you will, massive undifferentiated databases. We've got to bring tools to the customer that allow them to take their product marketing strategies and the retail response to those product marketing strategies and make those available real time so that the analysis can be done instantly and that the customer can iterate and do some predictive work on the information that they have. Uh, we already have applications that are in the marketplace that do that and we need to uh, see more of them. Other industries which are more predictable in the way that they operate, say manufacturing or uh, process or uh, even uh, energy industries, um, the web-based applications or web-based analytics uh, are still somewhat more removed. Uh, I'd say the top three uh, strategies or top three priorities for the group that I'm responsible for at SAP, which is primarily analytics or the uh, optimization applications, if you will, uh, have to do with how we help customers to bring what I would call the closed-loop processing into play. Customers have implemented and automated their core processes and have done a very good job in making that happen. Uh, they've created enormous amounts of data that is generated by uh, these automated processes. We now need to help them to use this information to understand how their processes are executing, do a better job planning, and optimize the processes based on the understanding that they've gained from the analysis that they have done. And so it's this new layer of what I would call management processes or soft processes that sit on top of the current automation that can help customers to improve their performance, improve the utilization of their resources, and improve their responsiveness to the markets. That is you know, the top of mind priority above all. In addition to that, as a follow-on to the integration of business objects into SAP, we're still working on making sure that the customer experience for the business objects customer and the SAP customer become very constant and very high quality and making sure that how we go to market uh, with SAP to both the SAP customers and non-traditional SAP customers uh, is as effective as it possibly can be.